So let's talk now about product life cycle. Products are usually classified as either consumer products or industrial products. Consumer products are for household or family use. They're not intended for any purpose other than daily living. Convenience products, such as eggs, milk, bread, and newspapers, are bought frequently without a lengthy search and often for immediate consumption. Shopping, pro shopping products, such as furniture, audio equipment, clothing, sporting goods, these are purchased after the consumer has compared competitive products and shopped around. Specialty products such as ethnic foods, designer clothing, and shoes, and arts and antiques require even greater research and shopping effort. Product, business products are usually directed or directly or indirectly used in the operation or manufacturing of pro, uh, manufacturing processes of businesses. They can be further classified into raw materials, which are natural products from the earth. Major equipment, uh, which is large, expensive items used in production. Accessory equipment, these are items that are not part of the final product, such as computers, fax machines, and hand tools. Component parts, these are finished items that are ready to be assembled into final products. Processed materials are things used regularly or directly in production or manufacturing operations, but they're not identified as component parts. Supplies include materials that are made, op made for operations, such as pencils, papers, and all that sort of thing. Industrial services are financial, legal, security, janitorial services, and the like that provides internally or maybe from an outside supplier. Product relationships within an organization are of key importance. A product line, for example, is a group of closely related products that are treated as a unit because similar marketing strategy, production, or end use considerations are important. Product mix is all of the products that are offered by an organization. So you have all these various business products. As an example, in addition to consumer products we talked before, a product line is a bunch of closely related products, and the product mix is how all of these uh, different products that are offered by an organization. Each of these has to be treated over time, and that's what's called the product life cycle. Like people, products are born and they, bo they grow, they mature, and eventually die. <clears throat> now, not exactly like people, obviously, but the point is, there's a new product that, every, that certain people want to be first, then there's a product that people are starting to have because other people have it. There's products that have you just buy them on a regular basis, but there's a lot to, to, uh, to choose from, and eventually that's replaced by some other product. So there's a life cycle in products. Um, these, this means that we have to be thinking about the product, where it is in the life cycle. All of these kinds of consumer and business products, product lines and the like, all are going through this time orientation, this time cycle, the various growth stages. There's important different buying behaviors between the introduction phase, people that buy that are buying something new that hasn't been seen before. They're usually less price sensitive, for example. Um, then you have the growth phase where it's, there's an acceleration where you have to supply more and more of the product and it becomes a distribution problem of where to place it and how many, you do, how many to place. Maturity becomes a pricing problem where you're trying to reduce the cost because you're competing with a lot of competitive offerings in the same marketplace. And decline, once again, becomes how much do I produce and where do I place it because you have a risk of being an overstock. And then you could lose a lot of the value from the product by having a lot of unused inventory. These are the, the life cycle issues. This table shows you some of examples of different products that are in different stages of a life cycle. For example, um, Google Glass was being introduced. This was back uh, a few years back. There's a smartwatch, electric car. We remember these things that are new. Then you have growth ones like tablets and Lego friends, uh, Ford Focus. Uh, these are cars that are taking off, if you will. Laptops, print newspapers, these are in maturity. 
whereas desktop computers, you don't really see them very much, but you still have to replace existing products. There's still some CD players out there. The PT Cruiser is another car that's out there, but is in decline, so you have to maintain it and the like. All of these, this, this whole cycle, all the different products that we mentioned before, product lines, product mix, you have to manage all of the component parts ac according to these various life cycles. That's why product management is such an important part of business, and there's a really a lot of good jobs in various areas of product management. It also gives you a general manager's perspective on all the different aspects of a product, business, bottom line, financials, research and development, all those kinds of things. It's a very good way to get general management experience by going through product management. Often those jobs are off, uh, can be offered to high potential, very young people also to give them the experiences they'll need later when they become more general managers in large divisions or um, regional areas and the like. So there are four stages that we described in the private previous charts. Talk a little bit about them um, in the various life cycles. You have the introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. The stage that a product is in helps determine the right, the appropriate marketing strategy. As products pass through the four life cycle stages, they get new advertising, new pricing strategies. If for each stage, they may have new, new products or features and different things become the important value generators as I kind of described before. In the introductory phase, consumer awareness and acceptance of the product are limited. Sales start out at zero, of course, and profits can be negative because so much cost goes into producing those first few products. Uh, money has been spent to build it in the research and development, developing the marketing plan and all that. During this, uh, this introductory stage, marketers are focused on making customers and consumers aware of the product and what its benefits are. Different kinds of promotions might draw that out as well. In the growth stage, sales are increasing rapidly and profits are peaking. This is because sales are approaching, uh, going rapidly. You have limited supply and high demand, therefore prices are high. If you think back to your economic, your micro, microeconomic models, one reason profits start to decline during the growth stage is that new companies start to enter the market, driving prices down due to competition. This increases one's marketing expense. Sales continue to increase at the beginning of the maturity stage, but by the but by then the sales curve peaks and starts to decline when products when profits continue to decline. This stage is characterized by severe competition and heavy, heavy marketing expenditures to try and continue to sustain market share and maintain this profitable profit flow into the company. During the decline stage, sales continue to fall rapidly and profits may decline and may even become losses as prices are cut and necessary market expenses, marketing expenses continue to be made. As profits drop, firms may eliminate certain models or items. So the, the key decision point here is when do I get out of this product and do I replace it with a newer product with new features and functions that can then begin its own product life cycle or is that whole class of products in decline. So it becomes a question of what exactly is going on in the sense of this declining market. It should be noted that the product stages are not always, they don't always go the same way. Sometimes they're different. Some products that have moved to maturity stage or into decline can still rebound, still rebound through a redesign or uses new uses for that same product. A prime example of this is baking soda. Originally, baking soda was only used for cooking, for baking, which meant that it reached maturity stage very quickly. However, once it was discovered that baking soda could also be used as a deodorizer in refrigerators and the like, sales shot up and bumped baking soda back into the growth stage. Similarly, Acer is making a comeback by releasing new lines of tablets and cell phones. The company focuses on value by offering quality products inexpensively. The Iconia 1.7, for example, is a 7-inch tablet that looks and functions just like, uh, just like some of the competition, but it costs significantly less. The company also introduced a hybrid laptop-tablet combination. Uh, this product was meant to appeal to more customers, again, by working on high value, 
with low price point. Acer is aiming for the middle of the market, positioning, uh, positioning it to achieve a successful comeback with some of its new products. Of course, it remains to be seen whether those that whether that success is actually ultimately realized, and it could very well bring the company back, or it also could peter out. So there's uh, lots of risks and challenges in offering new markets. As we said, it's very expensive to launch them. Many don't work. So it's really a portfolio of products. This product mix and these product lines with various mixes of products, features, and functions is really the driver here. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the importance of product branding.